morning, everyone. Welcome to The Gift. I have a really cool show for you today. Um, I've got two surprise guests with me here in the studio. Welcome, Jason and David. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me here. Thanks for inviting. And uh, I just have a, a deep prayer on my heart today, um, as I did last week. So we were just joking, this is kind of turning into from the bottom up again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just really have these topics of devotion and purpose in my mind and a real desire for a deep shift. So I have many questions and just as we were joining beforehand, it was feeling like the questions might get answered in actually sharing what the block is. So the questions I have are around actually, ironically, uh, or not ironically, actually coming into our stepping into magnitude online retreat and embracing your life's purpose, there's just a feeling like I want a more consistent, more naturally loving experience. And I'm aware that there are some blocks to that and um, some fear in looking at those. But that's been actually pretty inspiring for me just even in the last few days, like how do I face this, like head on face this, like what is the worst that can happen by just really taking the risk and facing it. So I think we touched on it last week actually with you, Jason, where it's like I can get down to this prayer and it's like, oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And then it's like you poke something that's like, don't touch me there. You know, like it, it's, I have the face of innocence in my mind too. So I just actually feel like this is a really rich topic. Like what, is, what does it take? to get down deeper, to really uncover what's underneath there so that it can be released, which Spirit would tell me is an intensely joyful experience, but there's just this, like, what does it take to really go there? It's interesting that um, Shakespeare had said, all the world's a stage and everyone must play their part. I did ask Jesus about that one time, and, and he told me, uh, all the world's a stage and spirit can play no part. And I was like, oh, that's a reinterpretation. But what it is is that that spirit is, is it transcends this world and then as we open to spirit, we have transcendent experiences. But you might say in a practical way, it's like letting the spirit speak through you, smile through you, laugh through you, hug through you, letting it come through you in an involuntary way and then there's this the ego part that has built the mask has has made the roles does not like anything to go out out of pattern with the roles and certainly does not like anything shifting roles in some kind of expansive way so that the mind starts to loosen from those roles and so it's quite um, it will come in quite hard when you start to open up and it's like that part in the Course too, it says you will, as you move toward the light you will rush to darkness and he uses the word rush to darkness because it's, it's almost like a recoiling, like oh, recoiling from the magnitude, recoiling from the vastness, recoiling from this involuntary flow. And um, Jason and I, as we were driving over today, I said, yes, yeah, it's all working together for good, there's nothing ever that's going wrong. We're just kind of keeping, like a, in an energy work kind of metaphor, keeping the meridians open, keeping the, the flow of the energy flowing. And then when there's a contraction or a block, then that's just a call to extend what is needed and what is helpful. Because it's really not individual minds, it's really just one mind that, that is learning to give and, and receive, because they're the same. So I think probably you're just facing some of these reactions, like you're recoiling sometimes, where you start to feel loving. Wow, I love this. I want this to be like this all the time. That's the prayer of your heart. And then wham, the ego comes in like, not so fast. Not so fast there. Yeah, it feels like a bit like that scene from the movie Tangled, where she leaves the tower and it's like, this is great! And then, you know, the next minute she's like rocking back and forth, like, oh, what have I done? What have I done? But it, it is, it's, that's the experience. There's not a consistency where it, it feels like um, two steps forward and one step back, or, or maybe 
one step forward and two steps back sometimes. But um, yeah, another one of the questions I had was just really how to keep that fire burning so, so, um, so bright. Like how to keep stoking the fire so that the purpose really is out front in everything because it's, yeah, like I just feel like the, I live in this community which is devoted to removing the blocks to love. And there's still an element of, like we were talking about accepting the means, there's still an element of that that hasn't quite clicked in yet. It's almost like I'm still living in the world in a way, like there's not a full recognition of what this is really for and what it takes. So I think that's, that's the prayer for me, is just like, what does it take to get through that layer? But I, I hear what you're saying is just like when there's something to communicate, really communicate it, whether it's to extend the, you know, to my brothers or, or clear something from my mind, which is the same thing, it seems. Yeah, you talked last week, both of you, I watched the show and you were really getting in really fully into commitment. And then you shifted from there and you kept going right with it. And then you got into the idea of temporary commitments, which of course, since everything of time and space is temporary, the, the Spirit will use that. And how you have to go through those temporary commitments to build confidence and strength in what's going to be a, an ultimate commitment to, to oneness and Spirit and God. So I think that's, it's almost like this week is kind of building on that, that commitment talk that you had, because that was leading more and more towards purpose. That's a lot of times people will say, to me, commit to what? You know, they almost a suspicious look in their eyes like, yeah, what am I committing to? And then it really opens the discussion into purpose because you really have to kind of get clear on that before you can fully give your heart over in a commitment. And I think that also leads the way to another topic you mentioned this morning was devotion when we were talking earlier. But you can't really even, I mean, you could say the same thing, people devote to what? Like, I, I better be really clear what I'm devoting to because I'm not going to commit or devote to something that is not truly, in my heart, expansive, free, loving, joyful. You know, I really uh, have to, to get a grasp of that and, and get a, a clear idea of the direction. So I think that's, that's great. This is like building off of the whole talk last week. Yeah, I don't remember yesterday we were talking about something in our big meeting too with the table and they said, why, why? Do you remember what you said? What was the, why don't you? Oh yeah, um, it came down to basically, I'm going to be kicked out. Right. But I mean, that in, is what uh, you were mentioning too, David, like I'm not going to be liked, you know, like if they see, I mean, it's like the oldest one in the book in a way, but there's something in my mind that's just like, no, that's true. You cannot go there. Don't go there. Like, don't bring this up. Whatever it is, it's not even, yeah. you know, one thing. It's like any number of tiny compromises that shut down yeah. and then just clam up and then you don't even know why yeah. you're not experiencing the natural devotion that is there. It's like, I can feel it. It's there. I know that it's there. I know it can feel the expansive experience and then it's like, you know, like a false start. Like You're trying to like manage the form, like do really well in the projects so that nobody would see how terrible you are underneath in your perception, you know? Yeah. And then we were kind of joking because you were trying so hard to do the projects, but no matter how hard you tried, the project, <laughs> <laughs> they were hard. starting to get really <laughs> funky. And it was like, you relaxed in that actually, okay, I'm never gonna be able to get them right. And then now I can face this mm. getting kicked out thing. But I, I really loved what, like, I could really feel what David was saying, like the mind, just before we had a little brief meeting, either talks and talks and talks and talks to avoid letting the spirit pour through, which is we're trying to raise leadership in the community as part of little tweaks, right? Or you clam up and you were saying that you clam up and maybe that's why you're coming up to Camus for a few weeks is to really focus on slowly letting that voice come through to fa and face that abandonment. Like you're not going to get kicked out if you speak the spirit. It's really the ego saying that you're going to lose me if you speak the spirit and it's true you will <laughs> yeah yeah i was reading um in the fear of redemption 
part or the part of the course and I was actually reading about it before our last online retreat and I just opened to it and I was like oh my god this is what's speaking to me right now this fear of redemption because it's not that I'm like maybe maybe this is the question it's not necessarily that I'm afraid of da, 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 you know that coming out it's more like what's underneath that mm. is that it would just you know my mind would blast into light yeah, that's very much like the obstacles to peace in the Course. The fourth obstacle is the fear of God's love, which really is the fear of redemption, but it's so described so vividly in there. I remember one time I was with a friend of mine, we were, I think, touring, we were driving through, I think, Wisconsin, and uh, she was driving the car, and she said, well, put the Course on. Or, no, she said, read, read me the Course. So I popped the book open and I started reading the obstacles to peace. And by the time I got down to the fourth obstacle, fear of God's love, she, the car was swerving all over. She was, couldn't even keep the car on the road. I said, we better stop here. But, <laughs> but I think it's, you know, it, it is like getting to an ultimate sense. Whether you call it, I'm going to get kicked out. Whether you call it, I'm going, I'm going to be rejected. Whether you call it abandonment issues, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's very deep. It runs all the way back to the core belief in separation. That's why it's so intense. That's why the, the emotions are so strong. And I do remember, I've had this talk with so many people, but there was a time when, uh, when Frank and I were just there, just the two of us, and <clears throat> I think, and he looked at me and he just looked me straight in the eye and he said, my greatest fear is that you're going to reject me, the community's going to reject me. Some, it was a, a rejection fear. And it reminded me of that, uh, that that trilogy I was talking about last night in the car, you know, the Unbreakable and Split and, and this last one, Glass. It's this dissociative identity disorder that our friend Bob Rosenthal is so, so uh, good at talking about, so expert, at, and at how when there's a core memory, that's what they showed in this final movie, Glass, the third of the trilogy. They, we got to see the core memory in the Samuel Jackson character, the Glass character, the, the, the core memory in the guy with the, the nine wow. personalities, alters, and then the, in the Bruce Willis's character too, uh, like, a, like an overseer character. We got to see the memories. There was a psychologist too who got them down to these core memories which were of just total rejection, abandonment, you know, pain, extreme pain, as far as uh, the Samuel Jackson Glass character. And, and so this whole idea of making a fragmented world and even having altars, I think of it as, as we have on this planet, we have like seven billion altars in one body of, of Earth. You know how they have altars in a, in a body and multiple personality or DID. And really that's what's going on and there's it's such a big cover-up it's like the big cover-up of identity, dissociative identity disorder. And, and I know it's so huge, because even when I was having a sandwich afterwards in the mall, this guy walked by with this DID um, t-shirt, and I'm like, look, look, look at that. You know, it's just coming at me from everywhere. It's just reminding me, it's like spirit is being very playful. Like, yeah, we've got some dis dissociative identity disorder going on, but you have to be willing to let that arise, to get in touch with that memory. And that's what the fourth obstacle is, is really getting in touch with the block. That, that the ego said, you swore in blood never to come back here. You know, you swore we would have, we had a deal going. It was a bargain with the devil, you swore never to come and, and lift this cornerstone. And the ego says, it will, you will die if you lift this cornerstone. You don't think God's going to let you off scot-free for this detour into fear and separation, when actually it's just pure light and love underneath that obstacle. But you swore in blood never to lift it. So that's really what's at the core of everything that we do with the whole ministry, the community underneath is, is just giving yourself the permission to go towards that, go in the mind, go towards that, and go towards that, uh, that mistake, seeming mistake, which really isn't a real one. It just has to be exposed and then released, and, and that's what's happening. And I think it's just very courageous to start to, to say, I just have to expose what's going on for me, even the intensities, mm. because that'll help build my confidence that I'm not going to be thrown out or 
rejected or abandoned just for exposing it. Because that's actually what we're encouraging. Mm. We, we all want that. We're all praying for that. Mm. Here you are on your show, <laughs> broadcasting out to all the beloveds. And <laughs> that's the best way to do it. <laughs> this is my prayer. <laughs> now the whole world knows. <laughs> yeah, I thank you. Thank you. And I have been having these experiences over the last few days, actually, since Jason arrived. In my mind, you're kind of like this can opener, which is like, oh, God, thank you. And um, so we had a love day the other day and <laughs> then the most wonderful <laughs> way. <laughs> but we had this love day the other day and there's more connection happening in the house. And it's just been a flip from like just like the doors are closed and there's just been a switch like I need to come out more and, and share and be with everybody and I was even starting to get really emotional around like no we need to be together but I was discovering as we would go towards like a love day where it's like I don't have anything in front of me I would just have all this fear coming up I mean it was just like they're gonna see they're gonna see they're gonna see something I don't want them to see and I can't even name it you know exactly what it is but I was really celebrating when those experiences were coming in because it felt better than, you know, just no, nothing. And it felt better than nothing. So it sounds like maybe that's the inroads is just like letting these waves of fear come up and then going to the love day and seeing that there's nothing, there's no reflection of, there's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, it, it seems so simple and I'm even stumbling over my words, but it, it needs to be an experience for me so that it, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I really feel that's what the prayer of your heart is. Like you were talking not too long ago how you, you know, you came from working at the typical workaday job in the world in a cubicle. So you literally came from a cubicle, almost cubicle boxed thinking of, I'm here to put my time in, inside the box, earn my pay, then I get my off time off to spend it any way I want and spend my pay, and you know, typical boxed thinking of the world. And, and actually, you know, you're here to expand your perception. That's really the only use of the body, that's the only use of all the symbols, is to expand your perception to a, a much larger perception of yourself, and then ultimately to to transcend perception entirely and go merge with spirit. Mm. Uh, I'm always fascinated when I when I read things online because they, they're always the head versus the heart. It's always some kind of duel. I'm like, the head versus the heart? What's this stuff? And, and I say, what is, I, I have to play the question, what is the heart? Well, the heart is the emotions and the head is the, the cognition and the thoughts. I say, well, they're, it's all connected. It's not like a battle, the head versus the heart, the longest distance you ever travel is to the head to the heart, 16 inches and all this and that. And then I, there's this whole thing about intuition versus rationality, and, and I always notice how rationality seems to get a bad name. It's like, come on, get out of your logic. Get out. Actually, the Greeks taught us that there was a great value in logic, and, and I love The Course in Miracles because Jesus is constantly, through the whole book, using logic. It's just that it's divine logic. It's just that it has a true causation. You know, spirit is in a state of grace forever. Your reality is only spirit. Therefore, you are in a state of grace forever. That's an example of divine logic. That's a perfect example of that. But you see how deep it goes. Whenever people are caught up into the false causation of this world and, and trying to fit into the world and balance the world and so on and so forth, then they don't really realize that their divinity is calling them to wake up from this world. And part of that is allowing yourself to be spoken through. And you can't ultimately do that fully as long as you retain a self-concept, as long as you retain a personal self-concept then you'll be afraid of the Spirit, because for the Spirit, everything you think and say and do teaches all the universe. You know, it's so vast. So, Jesus was just a good example a couple thousand years ago that, you know, I think people were a little bit okay with him as long as he was a carpenter's son, 
as long as he was a, a son, as long as he was, you know, a Galilean, as long as he was these things, you know, it was fine. And then when he started speaking, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And before Abraham I was, I am. They, they just got, re they reacted with fury. And then when he would go into the synagogue and, and be able to speak to the, you know, to the rabbis and to everyone there and, and say, your sins are forgiven. Wow, did that create a havoc. Your sins are forgiven. You know, right away they came back, what are you doing? Who are, only God can forgive sins. <laughs> and they, he took huge flack for saying, your sins are forgiven. When he was just, again, speaking from eternity and, and doing what he was given to do. So I think we have to all realize that we're all being called by Spirit. We're all going to reach that phase where we have to let the Spirit speak through us. And we have to do it no matter what seem to be the apparent consequences in the world because it's like washing away this idea that there's something outside of us that can hold us back or somebody's going to pull the switch or... And you're saying, you know, I'm afraid I'll get kicked out. I've been hearing Lisa talk about that for the last 12 years. The happier she got, the more she was sure she was going to get kicked out. And she would get so joyful that she'd call me up on the phone and she, she's, I'm like, what do you think, the, the metaphysical police are going to come and break down your door? And she, yeah, that's how it feels. Like, I'm so happy right now, I could burst, but I feel like someone's going to pound the door down and go, we got gotcha. you. You're under arrest. You're too happy. You know, you've gone too far with this. And that, that's what we're really facing here, is really going for it. We're really encouraging everybody to go for it. You know, don't hold back for any reason in the world. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just need to take that in for a minute, unless you guys want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good phase to be in it. You don't have to look at some block or anything. It's like, oh my God, I just have to say what's coming to me. That's it. Like that has to be the spirit's answer. It has to be yeah. more inspiration, actually, because I am inspired. That's maybe even why it's coming up with such intensity now. It's like, yeah, okay, you can't do this anymore. Like, right. you know what the answer is. You need to start speaking, and and then just be willing to then face whatever yeah. comes back. Uh, yeah, it's like this invitation into the out-of-the-box thinking and the ego's like, that's, that's, you know, hmm. the ego obviously says that's what, um, where you can't go. But yeah, just love what you're saying about logic and the head and the heart and all that stuff. It, it makes things very simple. Like, I don't have to figure anything out either. It's just, I hear what you're saying very clearly is you need to let yourself be spoken through and like, okay, that's practical. I can work with that now. It's practical. I think it also is the symbol, we have a symbol of, of spiritual community which is more of there's a, there's a strong welcome and there's an embrace in the sense that that's really why people came. Um, I've had heard people even going over, I think Anna was going over recently, her devotional stay application from years ago, just reading through it again going, oh wow, that's, that's right, that's why, that's why I came here. She was reading the answers to her questions that are in even the devotional stay application and she was getting all lit up because she was like, it was stirring up, it was activating a remembrance of like, oh, that's why I came here in the first place. And I think also that, that you might say that, that spiritual community or your relationships, your close relationships are symbols that are being used by the Spirit to build your confidence in this involuntary nature of being spoken through. So it's not like, you know, you, you have to like go out into the street corners of Ahihik and, and say, you know, woe to you who turn away from God, you know, like John the Baptist or something, you know, <laughs> from years ago. You actually have, have a beautiful constellation of, of symbols around you and there's, it's a, more of a gentle practice of, of speaking it. You know, it takes a lot to even speak it to those that live in the same house that you live in, much less go out on the, onto the public street corners and like a, like a town crier and say, God is real, 
forgive and you shall be forgiven. You know, it's, this is more of a, of a easing your way into building a confidence with that. And that's exactly how it works. And, that, and that's how we've worked in this community for years. Even when somebody would, would say, have a self-concept of, I'm not a good speaker, or I, I, I'll clam up, or I can't say these deep truths in front of people. Um, it's, it's an opportunity through broadcasts, through community gatherings and things. Um, I think when Diana and I would do a lot of those movie gatherings, you know, she felt she would just relax, we'd get so into the movie, and then I would kind of just prompt her with different things, and off she'd go, even though it wasn't something that was naturally comfortable for her in terms of the way her, her life had developed, but it was something that the passion took over. And even that, when you have, you're with the right configurations of people, and the prompts come in, and then away you go, and it looks like you're, you've been doing it for 25 years. So I see how gentle the Spirit is. The Spirit's always giving us what would help us. And even if it starts off with one person that you trust, or it starts off in your household, where you can just speak it up and, and talk about whatever, whatever's coming up without uh, any kind of reservation or, or kind of pushing down or deflecting away, you know, if you can do that, that starts to build the confidence for your life's calling. And that's very important. Your life's calling is extremely important. That goes for all of you, too. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we have just like a minute or two left, but yeah, thank you. Thank you deeply. It's like there's still something that needs to settle into my mind, but I can recognize that this is a symbol for like really taking those steps, so yeah. that feels really good and grateful. Oh, it's beautiful. Step by step. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I was just thinking, we were talking too in the car about Lucy, because for me right now it feels like from morning till night, it's like that blue crack thing, you know, and like how much more are you going to force me to take, you know, I'm not quite like Lucy where she says, give it to me all, you know, but <laughs> Morgan Freeman says, are you sure? Like even if I just, I'm so intense and then I'll just, okay, I'll watch an episode right before I go to bed, which means less rest, but I can't even really do that, it just has to, and then in that, I was just journaling with Jesus and he said, yeah, you need to do this, because then, then from that place, you know, the the egoic mind is actually silent. You're so being done through me. And then there will be small periods of quiet and space that you're not used to. And I'm, that's coming to me, a deeper and deeper rest. But I was just thinking, in a bigger context, each of us is going through the devotion in a different way. Like, that's what's for me now. And yet, on our last retreat, I noticed how you were really focusing on, okay, everybody, just relax, calm down. So it's just such an individualized... Mm -hmm approach to this devotion and yours is speaking speaking up so every yeah we all have our different phase yeah thank you so much thank you thank you thank you everyone for joining us and joining me in my prayer and see you soon <laughs> <laughs>